Hey everyone, I'm Rodney Brown. I'm here at Gray Orange, part of the marketing development team. Here with Matt Walker, here with Phononic, and here with Tony Reiner with uh, Gray Orange. We're going to have a discussion about demystifying automation in the cold chain and sustainability. So we'll get right into it. So far as the future of cold chain, far as regulatory requirements changing, what do y'all think about the future of automation in cold chain? Yeah, first, I mean, thanks for having us, Rodney. Thanks for having, having me and Tony. Um, Matt Walker from Phenonic, for those that aren't aware of who Phenonic is and what we do, uh, essentially Phenonic is the future of uh, cold chain when it comes to uh, microcooling technology and moving away from compressor-based systems to more of a solid state cooling technology. Uh, essentially, you know, imagine your refrigerator today has a mechanical compressor, gets a little noisy, has temperature swings. Uh, imagine a phenonic uh, device or tote or cooler that is using a semiconductor uh, chip uh, and, and micro cooling technology uh, really is, is kind of the trade off there. And I think from kind of the future of, of cold chain as it relates to automation and supply chain and, and kind of grocery fulfillment, uh, it's really all about how do you create a cold chain that's more flexible? How do you create a cold chain uh, that is more micro and, and not reliant on large kind of freezer rooms or cold rooms and, and provides that flexibility back to, to the grocer, to the retailer? Okay. And it's interesting, Matt, that you mentioned the flexibility because at, at Grey Orange, what we pride ourselves in is that our solutions with our intelligent automation and our robotic agents are flexible, right? You don't have to build your solution for peak right off the bat not knowing what the next two to three years will be. You don't have to build for five years out, right? You can build for the next 12 to 18 months and with our robotic agents orchestrate, right? The movement of those totes, which are storing goods, right? In any sort of environment. Absolutely, and I, and I think that's, that's where there's you know so much synergy between you know these types of solutions because that's really the intent behind a phenonic tote as well is is to allow for on-demand cooling right you're cooling what you need to cool when you need to cool it and as those dynamics change whether it's seasonality in an order whether it's a hotter climate versus a colder climate that these totes are operating in or that the automation is operating in uh, you're able to kind of uh, flex that capacity. And, and so that's where I think these solutions come together quite nicely to really kind of reimagine, you know, what that cold chain automation future looks like together. Yep, absolutely. Well, awesome. So we were talking about automation equipment. How does a company decide what's right for them versus like an AMR or a shuttle or what, just the different options that are out there? I'll let you take this one first and then I'll go off of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, there's a whole host of criteria that the industry looks at when trying to decide, you know, is an AMR based solution or a shuttle based solution right for me? I think from Phenonic standpoint, uh, you know, we obviously believe in our tote integrating with automation providers in general because of the, the, the shift that we're seeing retailers demand in moving away from cold rooms, freezer rooms, uh, allowing them to, you know, flex their capacity by not having the constraints of those rooms over time. Um, and, and so I think really, you know, automation in general, it needs to, you know, continue to proliferate and different retailers are going to have different criteria for what's important to them. And it's interesting that you mentioned a constraint because ultimately what we view as one of the constraints of, of certain automation systems is the fact that you have to build the whole thing at one time. So from our solution standpoint, our, our autonomous robots have the capability to pick up and move these totes both uh, the phenonic totes as well as ambient totes, right? In any stage, and we can slowly build to your capacity levels as, as necessary, right? And what it allows us to do then is sort of control that environment, control how the future works, right? And then what we believe to be the differentiator in our solution and sort of what makes it right for clients is the fact that we've got some efficiency, right? And that efficiency is found in our ability to pick orders directly into customer totes. So no longer do we have to add human capital on the back end to consolidate. Those orders are picked to consolidated totes to begin with. And that drives out the steps on the back end of the process as it generally exists today. Right. Awesome. So how would a company uh, justify the capital expense of going automated? Well, I think, and you know, it's, it's the question of how local is local, 
right? And how close do you want to be to your client base? How differentiated do you want to be in, in your offering? And that generally begins to justify what ends up being uh, sales and revenue driving experiences for clients because they sort of enjoy interacting with the robotics when they pick up orders. It makes it more efficient as well as in a tight labor market, right? Autonomous, autonomous robots, right? And intelligent automation help reduce the need on human capital, which is inherently a savings. Yeah, and I, and I think just adding to that, you know, you you really are looking to understand how much demand do you have out of your kind of e-grocery business today, right? And, you know, you can talk a lot about the different ways you can deploy automation, but I think in general, you know, a hub and spoke model makes a lot of sense for a lot of, you know, grocers out there. That seems to be the prevailing thought where you can kind of pool that demand. I also think, you know, different, there's different business models available to different retailers. And if you have a scalable solution that you don't have to design a, a, a automated solution out of the gates for a three-year kind of, you know, forecast demand, you can start with something that meets your demand today but can grow over time, that's going to change kind of that upfront capital expenditure, allow you to push that over a number of years and make it more attractive and actually maybe allow you to bring automation into your, uh, into your strategy earlier than what you already would if you don't have 2,000 orders a day, let's say, of, of you right, know, kind right. of available demand. And we're seeing that exact scenario with, with clients that we're talking to about, the, about grocery micro fulfillment is, hey, you know, I think in three to five years I might need X from a volume mm -hmm. standpoint, but right now I really only need X minus some portion, right? So how do I do this and prove out that capability that is still relatively nascent in the market and show the value of it? And with Gray Orange, again, we're able to do that because we don't have to build it all at once. Right. Okay. Well, how would somebody get started with that, either with Gray Orange or, or with it? Totally for not, how would a company get started? So, you know, I, I think, you know, first and foremost, you, you know, you've, you've, you've got to do a little bit of research. You have to, you know, find out a little bit more about what your strategy is. What are you trying to look to deploy? I mean, obviously, you know, from our standpoint, you can reach out to Tony, you can reach out to myself, right. and we can, you know, have some further dialogues on, you know, what the value is of, of each solution and each other's solution combined. Uh, but I think it really all starts with understanding, like, where's your business at today? What does your demand kind of look like today? Where are you at in your overall kind of e-grocery journey as a company, right? You know. Uh, is it, is it brand new and, and you're kind of picking manual orders without even software? Are you on the you know full scale deployment software across all my stores and now I'm looking at automation? Really kind of that evaluation of you know where are you at in that journey uh, today? And then obviously reaching out to, to either one of us for, for a bit more detail. Yeah, and, and to echo what Matt said, I mean at Gray Orange, you know, we pride ourselves in our consultative model of, of going to market with clients, right? And we like to help sit at the table and help understand what that strategy is, help define it with you. And, you know, given our expertise in the area, we we know what's available in the market, right? And we're able to provide a, a very level view of here's what your business probably needs. You know, it's our inevitable hope that um, we're able to partner with organizations like Phenonic and our clients and, and deliver these solutions with them. But we wanna make sure that the right solution fits the strategy and that's what we deploy. Uh, so we were talking about the future of cold chain. So what do you think retailers will have to do to get ready for the future? Yeah, so you know we're seeing a couple of really big changes around corporate social responsibility, uh, increase in regulatory requirements. This whole concept of you know kind of re your reduction of, of GWP or, or global warming potential, uh, evaluating how you improve upon that as well as kind of enhanced regulatory scrutiny around natural refrigerants and this move towards natural refrigerants. There's a lot of, you know, kind of existing legacy refrigerants out there today that are quite, you know, toxic and harmful to the environment. So now this new concept is natural refrigerants, which is essentially a move towards CO2. And that's actually where Phenonic is already kind of leading the industry and leading the future of what cold chain looks like because our our tote, our product inherently only leverages a little bit of water and a little CO2. So, you know, on that scale, if you were to see a chart, you know, on that scale of how good is Phenonics kind of refrigeration profile compared to any number of other refrigerants out there, we're almost already the benchmark because of the fact that we innately use CO2 in our product. 
And so I think that that shift is what retailers are going to continue to make as they continue to get pressure from their stakeholders uh, to you know increase their corporate social responsibility and their their overall awareness about their global warming impact. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that, right? Because along with those regulatory requirements, we'll, we will see the large refrigerated rooms and frozen rooms where retailers and grocers have, have historically stored product start to dwindle, right? They're, they're going to have to shrink, number one, or they're completely going to go away with the ability to store products for fulfillment in this manner. And that's where Gray Orange comes into play because we can get really, really small, right, in these areas as real estate continues to get more expensive, as capital expenses continue to grow, right, for buildings, we actually don't require that much space in order to operate a micro fulfillment center in grocery, leveraging totes such as Phenomics. No, absolutely. And I think as that upper level strategy around corporate social responsibility and, and global warming impacts drives in, there's this operational improvement that naturally occurs as well when you start thinking about as you remove you know, cold rooms and freezer rooms out of the equation, the ability to kind of scale your network, you know, so your supply chain network or your micro fulfillment network uh, increases in speed because it is such an impactful portion to the overall project timeline and delivery timeline. And also then you see these operational improvements uh, based on just micro cooling and cooling on demand, which is kind of the crux of what Phenonic delivers as a value proposition. And so they really end up feeding off of each other. Uh, but I just think it's so important to really drive home, you know, as corporations, retailers are looking at their overall kind of, you know, uh, green initiatives, they recognize kind of how Phenonic is, is leading this, this transition we're starting to see in the industry. Yeah, and we, we at Gray Orange see it as well. And I think where it comes into play is we've talked about buildings, but what about the transportation side, right? You don't yeah. need refrigerated trucks anymore, right? Rather than going from your hub fulfillment store to a spoke in a refrigerated truck, right? Gray Orange and its gray matter capability can plan specific carts around your planogram in your store for either replenishment for your orders and we can preset those at the hub store load them onto a regular van leveraging phenonics totes and maintain the cold chain from the hub to the spoke store absolutely well we're still demystifying the market so Will you guys be available at NRF that's coming up, the big show in January? Yeah, you know, both of our organizations uh, will be there. Uh, I promise to wear the uh, bright orange, gray orange shoes. You can find me in a crowd, no doubt. And I know that our, our Phenonic friends will be there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Phenonic will be there uh, with, with both our retail and automation divisions present. Uh, it's, it's always a great show. I've, I've gone in the past and uh, it, it really is the huge show, right? The right. big show that they I think they call it. Uh, but, but it has just some amazing technology and, and amazing and partners there. And it, it, just in case, if you're interested, Gray, Orange, and Phenonic will be hosting a probably more formal fireside chat uh, on the stage at the Gray, Orange booth. Uh, you can come and find us talk more about demystifying the cold chain. Awesome. Well, thank you for this wonderful discussion, Tony and Matthew. Um, I think we've demystified what's going on within the automation and cold chain and sustainability. And until next time, we'll see you later.